64, S&Ps are up 81. Let's get over to our man, Mr. Basil Chapman, as we do each and every Tuesday at 20 past the hour. And don't forget, folks, Basil has an outstanding show here every trading day, 10 to 11 Eastern Standard Time. Also, there's a great newsletter, the opening call. Now, it's very easy to get the opening call, folks. You come over to our website at TFNN. When the newsletters, you'll see it right on the left-hand side. You hit that button. You get the opening call for one month for $149. You get it for six months for $695, which is a savings of $199, or 22%, and one full year for $1,195, which is a savings of $593, or 33%. They all come with a 30-day money-back guarantee. And on top of that, Basil has approximately 14 archives out there so you can go through these archives to really understand how the market moves and how that Chapman wave rides these waves. Basil Chapman, what's going on? Hi, Tom. How are you? I'm doing good, man. Yourself? Very good. Thank you. Good. So, market-wise, I mean, we have volatility. There's no doubt about that, man. Absolutely, we have volatility. And what's really interesting is, let me just show you something here. This is the volatility index. The VIX index, VIX. Yes. X. Let me just get that. Okay. So in um, yesterday it hit sixty five point seventy five, and it the speed with which we went from just earlier last week to the acceleration yesterday, with all the news that was going on and the fear in Japan this and carry trade that. That was 65.75. That is, if you think about it, the COVID low back in March of 2020 was 85.47. And that was real. I mean, that was something completely different. That was building up, and that was something that we didn't even know how it would unfold. That was the coronavirus. Yes. So, And that was with business and the Fed. It was a whole bunch of things going on. So my assessment was, as we were, as we were skyrocketing to that high, that we were making some kind of a low yesterday. So it allowed us to uh, get get into the uh, down position, a long position, actually a kind of aggressive position. Um, but at the same time, I needed to see how the, how the close unfolded. We really didn't know how it would close. And in fact, the Dow did close down a thousand points. And let me just go to that. Um, so it didn't show that reversal. One of you, know, you and I have watched this over the decades, how those V-shaped reversals, everyone is just throwing all their stocks out one day. And if they, let's say they threw something out at um, $85, and, then, and it goes down that day, it goes down even further. But when the V-shaped pattern turns around, within the next day or within two days, they can't get it back. Even if they pay 125, that's how those V-shaped patterns unfold. They are vicious, and the prices that were at the low of the previous day, you just don't see them again for a long time. So the way we closed said to me, we aren't in that, we aren't quite in that situation. It was exacerbated mostly by news events and the media. So I have to take it as that's the price, 65. But the actual climax itself wasn't as intense as we usually see it uh, in terms of the buildup going to that. So that's just one thing. So that says there's a particular pattern that I follow. I discovered this years ago. I've been using it, and my, my subscribers know about it, and I've mentioned it in the den many times. It's where I'm looking at a price, and I talk about earthquake and aftershock. So you can get the earthquake, but the aftershock sometimes can be more intense so it could be a lower price, it could be the same price, or it could be greater. So what we're looking at is, in these particular patterns, I call this the dark news index, DNI. Um, and most of the time, up until this year, those peaks that were made with that, uh, uh, what I call the inside, so this, this is the I. Let me just get this right. This is the internal low and the residual low, and on the top it's the in. in, in residual high that comes in after the after that left side high. So this is really important because we made lows in April. We made this double bottom. And all the other tops that were made were with interest rates going much higher. In this case, the rates weren't all that high. And then all of a sudden, they started to fall dramatically. So inside, this is the IL right here. 
internal low, residual low. And then I see it on the 18th of uh, July, which is also the day that the Dow made that round number high, an exact round number high, which is very unusual, um, and then turned down that there could be a double top and that would be the residual high. Well, what happened is we did get that with a very sharp pullback and I'm calling this, you see this trend line right here? Yes. I'm calling this the in internal low and we'll see whether or not we get a bounce and then we make a residual low, either high or low at the same level. I'm suspecting it could be a little higher. So that's the one thing. So I'll put the two, two aspects together. That's the volatility index plus my um, internal low and residual low. I've got this as an internal low, and we went long yesterday. So we'll see where this goes. But here's another trend line. And this trend line says that the low that was made uh, three days ago at 39,358 uh, 39, in the Dow, what was the high today? 39,449. I actually mentioned this in my show this morning. I said, I want to see us touch it, but preferably within a day or two, close above that high. So we're in the process of trying to to uh, to do that. So that's the one thing. The other is we're looking at, I was talking about the small caps and the small caps showed yesterday through its action, the action yesterday that the 200 period moving average, this is the IWM we're talking about, yes. got hit. But actually, the rebound was very strong. And I thought, well, if it's all, if we're all done with the, with the small caps, and we've been long that for quite a while, uh, how what would happen if there isn't a sharp sell-off like there is? Well, they responded very well. And look, even today, they're up almost 2% at 206.05. So we've been long this. Uh, we took profits, and then we got out yesterday, for, and we got a new position today. Um, so I like that as a bounce. So most of this I'm looking at, and I'm saying, this is a work in progress. Uh, you've got uh, you've got some of the aspects that I'm looking at. Different sectors are rallying quite nicely, but we have to have follow through. In other words, the give back that we have right now. Let's just go to the Dow, for instance. Really, thirty nine thousand should be should hold on any pullback in the shorter term. I like what we saw. I think that we made a, a, quite an important low. Uh, I call it a low, maybe not the low. The SMHs, the semiconductors. Even they are participating, but I think that they still have a lot of work to do to really build up the kind of move that they had earlier on. So this is very selective, and I think if you're able to pick the right sectors, it could be a very nice rally for the next few weeks. And folks, it's very easy to get Basil's newsletter. Come over to our website at TFNN, and you're going to see it right on the top, newsletters. Hit that button. It's on the left-hand side. You're going to be off to the races. You just hit that subscribe button. Basil, you have a great one, a safe one. And, of course, we look forward to the show tomorrow morning. Thank you very much, Tom. You too. Have a great one.